Hey everybody, welcome back to the Name of the Rose. Let's continue shuffling around this abbey, trying not to look suspicious, just with our hands in our pockets, whistling a tune, hoping nobody pays attention to us. Okay, so it's Jen's turn. She's got to play a card, and what is she going to play? I'm going to put her cards face up over here off screen. This is just kind of hard to keep looking at them. Okay, I think Jen, yeah, she's going to play the Hortus, or Garden. You get a big old number four. One, two, three, four. The day is coming to an end pretty soon. And so somebody is going to come over to the garden. And I believe Jen will have good old Red come over to the garden, and like a good boy, like he should. And since this is where he's supposed to be, he gets reduced to one, two. Uh, and so Jen's gotten another hourglass. And I'm left to wonder, well, is Jen Red? Who knows? Okay. And then she draws a card. Alrighty, and now it's my turn, and what am I going to do? Let's see here. Uh, so I'm going to go to the infirmary. Yeah, let's see. I haven't moved blue up yet, so let's say blue is going to go about his daily business. He's going up four. One, two, three, four. The day is almost over now, folks, and blue is going to come to the biblioteca, where he's definitely supposed to be, So because I've gotten this. Now, that drops him down. One, two, three, four. So, he's clearly innocent because he was supposed to come work in the library, and that's why I got this little sundial. But, it was verboten, so he's increased 1-2 on the clues. And so, now Jen can see I have sent three people to the biblioteca this round, and so, well, it's up to her to decide. Am I, is one of these me, or all? Am, am I just like, you know, you know, kicking around in the dark, hoping one of these is her? You know, she doesn't know, but she can take her own best guess. So, anyway, and so now I draw another card. And now it is Jen's turn again. And as you can see, the day is almost over, folks. And here's the thing. The player who, who does the final move, the move that pushes it over the top, you don't want to be that player. Because if you're that player, you have to take the event token. And at the end of the game, this is two more points of suspicion for you. You don't want to be the last person walking around at night, because that's very, very suspicious. So what is Jen going to play? I think Jen is going to play this card. As you can see, it only moves forward one. So, you know, as the day gets closer and closer to the end, you definitely want to hold some cards in your hand that have low values so you can use them at the last possible second and drag the day out as long as possible. So Jen's playing a one, so the hourglass has only moved forward one. It's gray. And so now Jen is going to make Mr. Gray here. Uh, gray will come over here to the um, infirmatorium. And we'll take this. And Gray is now four steps more innocent. One, two, three, four. Gray is clearly an innocent man. He's just done nothing but what he was supposed to do all day long. And so then Jen draws a card. And now I'm kind of stuck because if I play any card, if I play this one or this two or this three, it doesn't matter. I'm going to cross over the line and I'm going to trigger the end of the day, which means I basically get negative two points at the end of the game. So that's kind of scary. I don't want that to happen. But that's where these hourglasses come in. Because if I play this one, but I also give up an hour or a, 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 what do you call it? A, not an hourglass, gosh darn it. A sundial with it. I subtract from the number as many sundials as I give up. I could play this three if I really wanted to do this action and play all of these and it would be like zero time was passed. So that's why it's worthwhile to collect these sundials. Now I'm just going to play one. Ah, oh, see, yeah. So if I play one, that's to go over to the dorm and I'll have to give up one sundial so that I don't end the day. <clears throat> and if I'm going to do that, well, either I'd want to send Gray here, but Gray's already here because I'd want to collect another one of these sundials, but Gray's already here, so I can't send him there. Can you? You can't send the same guy to the same place again. He has to move to another place, doesn't he? Or could I play Gray? See, I'm not sure about that, actually. Let me, I don't remember that coming up last time we played. Da, 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 da. Playing a, carrying out the action, the monk. All right, if you play a, uh, yeah, yeah, building card. Must move any piece from a different building to the corresponding building, and then carry out. So yeah, if, if I play this, somebody has to move here. So that's what I thought it was. Okay, so if I play this, I can't, I can't move gray here so that I could get another hourglass, but I could move somebody else here who's not gray, and that would be suspicious for them. Now, I'm already sitting here at um, white. Now, I, because, let's see, Five, four, three, two. Because of where I am, I am currently going to move forward two. Because I don't want that to happen. So I could 
Let's see. I could play the capitulum, which would and then move my white guy here. So my white guy would become three steps more innocent, and I'd get another hourglass. Although I'd have to use up all my hourglasses to do it. Let's see. Uh, ecclesia. Where's the Ecclesia? Oh, hey, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this. So, now that means the hourglass should, or the, the time should move forward too. But I'm going to give up two of my sundials, so they come all the way here to the end of this line. Um, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, I, 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 I forgot something earlier in the game. As soon as any location runs out of these little timers, you're supposed to take the two from the bottom of the line and add them. So I forgot to do that in the main run through. Sorry about that, folks. So they, you know, they're constantly cycling. And these two I've just gotten rid of, well, they'll eventually cycle back into the game much, much later. All righty. So orange and white have a reason to go there. But right now, I played Ecclesia because I'm moving white over here, over here. So he has just become six steps more innocent. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, look how innocent he is. And But I could claim to all the world, oh, I just did this because I wanted to get the sundial. That's why I did it. And then I get to draw a card. And hey, it's white. Okay. So, now maybe that was suspicious to Jen. Maybe it wasn't. Jen knows, hey, I really screwed white early on, but now I've made white really innocent. Have I given myself, to, have I given too much away? Well, that's the whole point of the game. Now it's Jen's turn. And so she's going to trigger the end clock if she doesn't figure out a way to, um, hmm, let's see. Well, you know what? I think Jen is a little suspicious of white, and it just so happens she's got a white card. So she's going to play this, which is a one, but she's going to give up one of her timepieces. And so now she can make white go anywhere she wants. And she could make him even more innocent, and then she could get herself another hourglass so she didn't have to waste an hourglass. Or she could say, send him over here and make him look really guilty. And um, and that's a tricky spot. I mean, because she wants more hourglasses. They're very, very. But if she suspects me, she might want to really screw him. But I think she's not sure yet. So she cares more about getting more hourglasses right now. And he's already so far innocent. She's not really too terribly worried about. It. So she'll send him over here to the refractory. So he's five more innocent, which he can't go any farther than zero. And I'm very happy about that. And so Jen just got herself another hourglass, and then she draws a card. Okay, now it is my turn. And let's see. Hmm. So, I'm not going to mess with white anymore. He can't be in a better position. So, the capitulum or the infirmum domus. Now, I think I definitely want to play this because it only has a number one. So, I want to advance one, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my hourglass. But my last, now I'm running out of low value cards. If I, you know, pretty soon I won't be able to stop the passage of time. But I had one more one, and that means moving somebody to the infirmary. And again, I'd love to move Gray here so I could get another hourglass, but he's already there, so I can't move him. Let's see here. So, who will I move? Well, who, I mean, I, I should move whoever it is that Jen thinks is, or, you know, whoever it is I think that Jen is. But at this point, I don't really have a good idea of who she is. Um, she certainly made gray really look innocent. Blue looks really, really innocent. Although I think that was mostly me. I think I did that because I moved blue up there. Um, let's see here. What will she do? She will, or no, what, or no, what will I do? What will I do? Um, I will move. Hmm. <clears throat> I think I'll move red up here. And so I've just made red look more suspicious. Again, I already hit red once. Let's hit red again. So red has no reason to come here. And so red just increasing suspicion. One, two, three. And I'm hoping it's red. Okay. All right. And then I draw a card and it is a number four. Oh dear. I have run out of my ability to stop the passage of time. If Jen um, can, can delay one more turn, and, I, and she can. Look, she's got so many. So I think what Jen is going to do is she is going to play the... Um, hmm. Jen will... That's interesting. Jen will play red. Oh, no, but it, oh, no, she won't. She won't because that's number four. I didn't look at the number. That would trigger the end. That would be bad. 
So Jen is not going to play red. Sorry. Yeah, and I should not know she has that. Pretend for, strike that from your record. She, you don't remember she has a red card in her hand. She will instead play the um, office. So somebody's got to go to the office. It takes two, but Jen's got two that will buy her some time. And now who's going to go to the office? The officina down here. I think she'll have uh, Mr. Black move over here, uh, which means he is now less suspicious. One, two, three. And Jen has just gotten herself another hourglass. And that's it. And then she draws her card. And that's it. She stalled long enough. I have run out of time. I have a three, a three, and a four. I cannot do it. Whatever card I play, I'm going to trigger the end of the day. And that's negative two points to me at the end of the game. So you really want to hold on to those low value cards. You really want to be collecting these as you go through the day. But you also um, want to be, you know, trying to, you know, at least I was successful at completely eliminating my innocence. So that's pretty nice. But you know what? I'm not completely alone. Oh, whoops. And by the way, office should um, have gotten two new chips when it got emptied. There we go. Ba -ba -ba. All right. And let's see here. So which of these am I going to play? Capitulum or Porta? Um, Porta. So I could send red over here. I can make red a little bit more innocent. Or black a little bit more innocent. Or I can make somebody else more guilty. The interesting thing is I could make... Right now, I am tied for most innocent. If I say, said, um, you know, moved gray over here, gray would really streak up, and that would make me the most innocent. But maybe I was doing that because I wanted to make gray look guilty. What the heck? Let's do that. I'm going to play the Porta. That increases by four, and we've crossed over the line. So that means I have just gotten this. This is negative two points to me at the end of the game. Gray came over here, and gray just increased. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so. That's it, folks. The end of the day has arrived. And so I end up taking this negative two at the end of the game. Um, we reset the time dial. Okay. And, uh, right. So we now are going to have, what are these called? The, the, I forget what they're called. The, it, it doesn't really matter, but I, well, you know, Jen and I, we always called it the confession because basically now what every player is going to do, because we've gotten to this spot, each of us has um, all these little markers, and as you can see, they match every color of monk. And you know, while the game says you're supposed to put them all face down, you could have them just all face up. And by having them all face up, that just means, oh, I could be any of these. And what I have to do is, I have to eliminate one of these. I have to pick one of these colors other than white. I can't pick white because, of course, I am white. But I could now reveal to the game, say, that I'm not orange. And so that would help Jen figure out who I am. And you know, maybe I would reveal that because, well, clearly, orange is very, very guilty. And so I got to figure out what information do I want to give Jen now about who I am not. I'm going to have to do this three times over the course of the game. This is just the first time. So I'm going to have to eliminate half of these. Let's see. I think I want Jen to, I mean, obviously it won't be white. I think I'll... Hmm. I think I'll just go with um, trying to keep all of those. Well, see, I just made gray look really suspicious. And now that was a dangerous thing to do because in doing that, I made me look really innocent, but I could have been doing it in such a way. So what I don't, I don't want to show gray. Or yeah, no, if I do show gray, then that's me like to, yeah, what's, I'm going to show gray because that's me declaring to the world that, you know what, I'm not gray and I suspect you might be. And that's why I tried to screw you there. So as to throw the, the scent off the trail that I'm really white as, as an example. All right. You know, the, the white monk. So now, I mean, everybody just puts them out here. We don't reveal, we all reveal at the same time. Now, what is Jen going to do? I'm just going to put all of her little markers off here to the side also. Um, and she's got to pick one to reveal about herself, and she will reveal that she is not. All right, there we go. So, okay, so we both chosen. I'm the A player, Jen's the B player. Everybody reveals at the same time. I reveal, hey, you know what? I'm not gray. And Jen reveals, I'm not white. And I'm like, I knew that. Um, but I, you know, I have to, you know, I, I can't, I, I have to be, I have to play my cars close to my chest. I can't say, ah, I already knew that because then of course I'm revealing that I'm white. I have to say, oh, very interesting. So I know Jen is not white, but that told me nothing because I knew that because I'm white. Arg. All right. So anyway, and meanwhile, I have given Jen a little bit of information that I am not gray. All right. 
So now, oh, but I forgot the other thing. We have to transfer our suspicion into our clue meter. Orange is the worst, so orange moves forward five. One, two, three, four, five. Red is the next. Red moves forward four. One, two, three, four. Black is the next, moves forward three. One, two, three. Gray moves forward two. One, two. Blue moves forward one. And white doesn't move forward at all. And here is the lay of the land. Clearly, you know, if the game ended right now, gray and white would be tied for first place because they are the least suspicious. Actually, that was really kind of dumb because um, I proved, hey, by the way, I'm not gray. I really should have, I should not have shown Jen I was gray because I want her to think that I'm gray because I don't want her to think I'm white. So let's say I would have revealed that, hey, you know what? I'm not red because Jen would have said, well, I, I would have guessed that. And Jen revealed she's not white. Well, I mean, there, so there's a lot that goes into thinking about, how, you know, if I had shown, if, you know, that was dumb of me to say that I'm not gray because obviously if I'm not gray, then it's very suspicious that I might be white because white came out on top. So if I'd said I was red, I'm not really giving Jen much interesting information because chances are I wasn't red anyway because I wouldn't have let this happen. All right, so at the end of the day, all that transfers and then everybody resets to 10 for the next day. Then we do the revealing stuff after all this happens. So I did that out of order. We do all the end of day stuff, then the revealing happens, then we move on to the next event, which is uh, Forshend, which is... Questioning. If a monk visits a building in which there are other monks, each monk earns one clue point. So if monks move into the same area, they start asking each other questions and it makes all of them more clues against all of them. So that's actually a particularly useful thing if I can figure out who Jen is or if Jen can figure out who I am, that we want to cluster people together because it makes them more suspicious the more they cluster together. Just as long as we don't cluster ourselves together. All right. And so and the interesting thing is, while it was a downer that I ended up taking this, at the end of the game, this means I'm going to have to move myself too forward. I've got this you know, around my neck. But on the flip side, I get to do two actions in a row because whoever ended up taking this is the first player to act on the next day. Oops, I should have drawn a card. So what am I going to do on the next day? Well, let's see. Knowing that it's very suspicious for people to congregate, I think I will... Hmm... Porta. Ah! See, what I want to do is I want to move a bunch of people to Porta because then, all, you know, as long as it's not me, they'd all move forward. But the only thing, I, I can move myself around, but that's not particularly good. All right, what am I going to do instead? I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to draw attention to white at all. So I already kind of took a chance there. Let's see here. What do I want to do instead? Well, I want to start collecting my, you know, my time pieces again. So how about, let's see, Capitulum. How about I play Capitulum? That's three hours. One, two, three, and I can move anybody there. I'll move good old Red here, um, who Jen knows. She knows I'm not Red, so she knows I'm doing this solely to get the, you know, the timepiece, and then Red drops one, two, three. Now, here's the thing. Jen could be Red. Jen knows I'm not Red, but she might still be Red. It's kind of dangerous for me to do that, but, you know, I, I just want to get the timepiece, and um, if I was going to move, to, I, either, I, I didn't want to move my own guy there, because that would have been too obvious, et cetera, et cetera. So, there we go. And now I can move to the office next turn. Now it's Jen's turn. What is she going to do? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Let's see. I think Jen will... Yeah, Jen's going to play red as well. This is four hours on the timer. One, two, three, four. And now red could go anywhere. You know where red's going to go? Right over here to the porta. Boom. And because of all the questioning that happens, all three of these guys move forward. How many spaces was it? Um, one space. So red moves forward one, orange moves forward one, and gray moves forward one. And now that could tell me that Jen is not any of those colors. All I know is she's not white, which I already knew anyway. So she could either be trying to throw me off the trail or... She could be, well, she knows I'm not red, but she might think I'm gray because, you know, gray was really, really innocent. And so maybe that's just a way for Jen to try to hit gray without drawing attention to herself, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, so that was Jen's move. She gets a new card. Now it is my turn again. And um, let's see here. I will, what am I going to do? So the office. Let's see, I, I try to move, I'm black can't move here. Again, I could move white, but that would be very suspicious. I don't want to draw a suspension. Um, although, oh, wow. 
Okay, I'm going to play four. No, okay. Let's see. Hmm, I got to take a stab at who Jen is. Who do I think she is? Uh, I'm going to guess for now because Gray was so innocent and she was so happy about it last time, I'm going to guess that Jen is Gray and that this was a smokescreen. She moved over here because Gray increased by one, but you know, that's my guess for now. Jen is Gray because Gray was so innocent. And you know, So I'm going to hit Gray hard. I am going to move Gray to, uh, what is it, the, um, right. I'm going to play the Kalina. And so that's four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to move Gray over here. Gray has no reason to be here. That's very suspicious. Gray just climbed up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gray is hugely suspicious. Um, and I'm hoping that's right. And Jen is either saying, oh crap, he's on to me, or Jen is you know, laughing and tittering to herself because I've totally missed it. Anyway, so then I'm going to draw another card. All right, and oh. Now this is a special card. This is the uh, I was I was wanting to play long enough so I could draw one of these cards so I could show you how they work. I'll play this on the next turn. So now it is Jen's turn. What is Jen gonna do? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Jen is going to play the Scriptorum, which only increases the hour by one, and she is gonna make Mr. Black come over here. So. And that's very innocent. He's supposed to be here, so she gets a timepiece, and Black goes down four. One, two, three, four. Is Jen potentially the Black player? Black looks pretty innocent, too. Is, was that a movie that Jen was trying to protect herself, etc., etc.? And then she draws a card. And now, this is the Sean Connery, William Slater card, or Sir William and Addison card. I can play this, and I, it can either be a five or a zero. So this is good to have at the end of the day if you don't want to move the time forward. But for now, I'm going to play it as a five and push time forward really hard. One, two, three, four, five. And now, this means I can either move uh, Sean Connery or, William, or Christian Slater. And let's see here. I suspect, remember, I suspect Gray, so I'm going to move the um, Acolyte, Adson, over there. Now, it doesn't matter that these two are together. Whenever you move them around, they have a special power. When they get moved, they affect all the other monks who are at that location. Adson has the potential to increase or decrease by, what is it, by, um, let's see, Adson increases or decreases the suspicion of everybody there by five. This, um, you know, um, Baskerville increases or decreases the clues by three. So it's actually, this is a bad time to move Adson here. Really, I should move him over here because then I could hit two guys at once. You know what, what the heck? I am going to hit two guys at once. I'm going to move him over here instead. Even though I think Jen is, I'm, I'm a, I've already hit Jen really hard. I'm going to hit orange and red as well. He can either reduce or increase the suspicion of both of these guys by five. I'm going to increase red. One, two, three, four, five. And you know what? I'm going to decrease orange. One, two, three, four, five. And obviously, that's me trying to throw Jen off the scent. That, oh, am I being obvious? A am I orange and I'm trying to protect myself? Or is that a false lead? And, you know, in this game, I mean, it'd be, it's very ballsy, but it, it can pay off really, really well. So Adson just hit both of these guys, and now Jen's really got to wonder, hey, maybe I'm orange because I made that move. All right, and then I get to draw a card. And it's a low number, and that's good, because I need to start collecting low numbers, because we're running out of time here. Um, and now it is Jen's turn again. And, let's see, you know what Jen's going to do? She is going to... Uh, she's going to play the garden, which is only a one. And she's going to move Gray up here because he's supposed to go there. So his suspicion level has dropped by three, and Jen's gotten herself another hourglass. One, two, three. And so I might be right to be guessing because maybe Jen is trying to save Gray's hide and, and pull him back down from the, from the limit because time is running out. And now it's my turn again. I, you know, I haven't done anything with white for a while. So I think now's a good time to do white. One, two, three. And I'll just very nonchalantly make white look... You know what? I could move him over here or here, which would increase me by four. But instead, I'll move him over to the dorm, because that only increases him by or decreases him by three. 
One, two, three. And so that looks a little bit less suspicious. Because if I was white, obviously I would have taken the four instead of the three. Or was that too obvious? You know, that's the kind of bluffing you do. And I got another high card. Arg. And see, and so Jen's turn. What is she going to do? Um, how many more hours are those? One, two, three more hours. And so Jen is going to play Dormitorium, which is three, but she'll give up one hourglass. So she only moves forward two. And who's she going to send to the dorm? She will send blue to the dorm. And that's uh, blue is now looking a lot more innocent. One, two, three. And she just got another hourglass. Did she do it because she's blue or because of the hourglass? But now here's the interesting thing. Remember, don't forget, we have a questioning. So whenever people get together, they both increase. So both blue and white have increased by one on the clue meter because they were, why were they, why were they talking in secret in whispers over at the dormitorium, um, et cetera, et cetera, because questioning was up for the day. And now we're once again close to the end of the day. And um, right, and so now we got to start stalling. I'll play my one for the Kalina, and I'll play one of my guys here so it doesn't actually trigger the end. Oh, whoops, oh, the dorm needs two new pieces now. Oopsie, as does, this is really easy to forget, as does the infirmary. So what did I just play? I just played Kalina. Who's gonna go to the Kalina? Where is the Kalina? The Kalina, 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 Kalina. Oh, here, right. Orange or black. If I wanna get another one, orange is looking pretty innocent, but remember, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I was trying to create a, a situation where it looked like I might be orange. So let's move orange over here and make orange look that much more innocent. One, two, three, four. Oopsie. And I knock everybody over while I'm at it. Okay. Um, and actually, does questioning affect when it's Sir Baskerville? I assume not. No, yeah, because I don't think he counts as a monk. He's a special. So... That was that. I've made orange super innocent so the gen will think I am orange. Um, and I got another thing. And then I draw on the low number. It's a high number. Oh dear. So if Jen, right, oh, and I forgot Jen drew a card last time too. And Jen, she'll play the biblioteca. Dang it. And she'll pay too. So once again, she. So somebody's going to the biblioteca. And um, it will be blue. Will it or will it be? But if she could do orange or white, so she could get something. Um, ooh. It will be black. So black gets hit hard. He's not supposed to be there. That's an increase of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Black is now the most suspicious person in the abbey. Um, which I got to assume that means Jen can't be black. She wouldn't have done that move. All right. And so now uh, she draws a card and I have run out of time, folks. Oh, yes, I do. I have three. I have, I have enough time. I give up all three of my hourglasses and I'll play th this three and red's going to go someplace. And the sun is starting to set. Where's red going to go? Um, I see. I think I want to, I'm a, I'll send red someplace he should go. Red, ha oh yeah. So I'll send him over here to the stables. Um, that makes him more innocent. I get that. He goes down one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here's the problem. If I put him down here, he's then tied with me for innocence. I don't want him to be that innocent. Shoot. Crap. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The scriptorum should have refilled. Let's see what's in the scriptorum. A six and a two. Dang it. I really, I, I needed to move red so that I didn't have to move forward the clock. I got to put red somewhere. And I want to collect a thing, but I don't, I don't want to tie him. So I think I'm going to have to make um, red more guilty instead. Uh, because for all I know, Jen is still red. Let's have red move over here. And that's 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If Jen's red, she did not like that. All right. And unfortunately, no, and so, and that bought me the time because I gave up all the rest of my hourglasses. Now I'm out. And Jen... She'll take red, only move forward one, but she won't move forward any because she still has these. And she will have red go to the scriptorum where he reduces by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so Jen was very quick to solve that problem for red. And now it's my turn again. I can't do it, so I'm going to have to trigger the clock one more time. And I'm going to get another negative two. Shoot. And Jen drew a card, of course. And... 
what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to have to take negative 2. Do I want to at least make it worth my while? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to play 3. I'm moving forward 3. That crosses over the line. And I'm moving white over here to the office. That makes him 4 more innocent, and I get a thingy. 1, 2, 3, 4. And so now he's the second most innocent in the place. Maybe that was too obvious. Maybe not. Um, Jen surely has reason to suspect that I am orange or white. So I don't want to reveal orange or white with these things because those are pretty obvious. Right, so now at the end of the turn, um, both these guys are tied. So red and black both move forward five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see, gray moves forward four. One, two, three, four. Blue moves forward three. One, two, three. White moves forward two. One, two. And orange moves forward one. And so that is the end of all of that. And white's looking pretty good. All of these reset again. And again, because we are playing the accelerated variant, in the regular game, we would reveal another day, we do another day. But for the accelerated variant, I end up with these two points. And now we both have to reveal. And I will reveal, what the heck, that I was black, I think. Because clear, you know, because I, what I don't want to do is I do not want to reveal that I am not um, orange, yellow, or gray. Because those are the ones I've been trying to make it look like those are the guys I favor. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then Jen, meanwhile, she will reveal that she is not orange. So Jen has revealed she's not orange. So now that's actually useful. I knew she wasn't white, but now I have a one in four chance of guessing who she is. And then we move on to the third day, which is uh, middle sum, which is... Informative. When William uh, Baskerville, Sean Connery, is moved to the same building as Adson, his apprentice, or vice versa, suspicion points are converted into clue points immediately. Wow. So you can have a mid-round scoring session. You don't have to wait until the end of the day. And then afterwards, they all reset. So on this day, it's potential that we might get hit twice. But you know what? I'm going to stop right there. We're about halfway through the game now. Um, Comment below and see if you can guess who, what color Jen is or has she done a good job at hiding her identity. Um, and otherwise, you can hit the other button and go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.